Welcome everyone to the Vyond Podcast. Great to be here. Today we're doing a bit of a deep dive into something pretty mind-blowing, actually. Keeping in touch with our furthest uh, envoy out in space. That's right. We're talking about NASA's Voyager 1. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been out there for, what, 47 years now? 47 years. Launched back in 77. It's incredible. And it's currently about uh, 15 billion miles away, mm -hmm. sailing through interstellar space. Just staggering numbers. Oh. And keeping that connection alive over 15 billion miles. Well, that's the challenge, isn't it? There was a recent hiccup, right? A communication issue. Exactly. Yeah, things got a bit tricky. Um, back in October, they sent a command, pretty standard stuff, to turn on a heater. A heater way out there. Yeah, partly to deal with, you know, radiation damage that builds up over decades. Right. But this command, well, it triggered an autonomous fault protection system. Ah, so the spacecraft itself sort of went, hang on, put the brakes on. Precisely, like a built-in safety net. It detected something wasn't right and uh, shut down some systems considered non-essential. And that included the main way it phones home, its main transmitter. Yes, exactly. The one that sends back all the important engineering data, the telemetry. You know, is it healthy? What are the temperatures, voltages? The spacecraft's vital signs, basically. So they lost that. They did. A couple of days later, the Deep Space Network, those huge antennas NASA uses, they realized they weren't getting the usual signal back. So, yeah, they were kind of flying blind on its status. Okay, wow. So how do you even start fixing that? I mean, 15 billion miles away. Well, this is where it gets really cool, I think. The engineers had to get creative. They actually managed to reestablish contact using a, uh, a backup radio system on Voyager. A backup. Okay. Get this, though. It's a system that hadn't really been used for communication since 1981. Wait, 1981, they fired up tech that's been dormant for over 40 years across that distance. Incredible, isn't it? Speaks volumes about how well this thing was built. Uh, this older system uses a different frequency S-band compared to the main X-band. And the difference matters because yeah. less data. Yeah, much lower bandwidth. Think dial-up versus broadband. So they could confirm it was still there. They could send commands, get a basic carrier signal back. But not the detailed health info, not the telemetry. Exactly. Yeah. Not enough to figure out why the fault system triggered in the first place. So they know it's there, they can nudge it, but they're still piecing together what actually went wrong. That's the current situation, pretty much. They need to understand what caused that fault protection to activate before they can safely switch back to the main higher bandwidth X-band system. And the whole time you've got that massive delay what is it? I don't know, 23 hours for a signal to get there, one way. 23 hours. So nearly two days just for a round trip message. Send command, wait almost two days for a response. Imagine debugging your computer with a 46 hour lag after every click. It uh, requires enormous patience and really clever planning. It really does put it in perspective. The human ingenuity involved trying to diagnose this 47 year old machine in deep space. It's just amazing. Absolutely. It's a testament to the teams, past and present. It's ongoing work, but a real story of persistence. A fantastic glimpse into deep space exploration. Makes you think, doesn't it? About these incredible journeys continuing against the odds. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more intriguing stories right here on the Vyond Podcast.